Hello and welcome to part two of this new project. The lovely, has to be said, little clear prop i16 type 5 in 70 second scale. As you can see here, I'm using some funky looking cement. It's from Ammo. I thought I'd give it a go. See if there's any advantage over the clear. And I think it's quite useful actually. It uh, enables you to see exactly where the glue's going and it stops you chucking it down absolutely everywhere, keeps it to a minimum. Just putting on that tiny little control stick there, the gluing surface is tiny. So a uh, good idea just to go in and back it up with another little dab. But you can see the advantage there of the very fine brush with the blue and uh, you can just put the glue exactly where you need it. Same for the rudder pedals going on now. Tweezers are an absolute must for this model. It is very small, but the detail is actually beautiful. And again, just a bit of pressure, just with the top of the tweezers, just to make sure it all glues properly. This little handle thing here, oops. This happens sometimes. It's so small, as I said, tweezers are an absolute must. That wasn't the first time I dropped something and it won't be the last. But the cockpit is really very well detailed. There's lots of levers and bits and pieces all over the place, as you'll see as we go along. And there's the finished floor. This is one of the cross members that sits in the bottom of the fuselage. And the gluing points actually, um, they're not that uh, positive so there's no sort of tongue and groove thing here they literally butt joint on so yeah take your time glue them on and then once you get in the right place I really recommend you just leave that to dry to one side so here's those bits now as you can see on either end there's the little sticky up bits they fit into grooves on the fuselage sides and they're part of the structure what I did find is they interfered with the fit and it was because I'd allowed them to, as they were drying, they just moved slightly out of place. So all I did is I cut those off, stuck them directly to the fuselage sides and the, uh, the wings just clicked onto the fuselage with no problem at all. But you can see there that there's those three um, bits there and the cockpit floor will eventually sit down and actually glue onto them so uh, it kind of gets inserted from the cockpit underneath. Time to put a bit of paint down now and uh, this is uh, MRP. Obviously it goes down very smooth. Uh, FS, um, what was it? 35270 I think the American color, which is a nice kind of neutral gray. It's not too warm. It's a little bit on the cold side. It's just what I wanted. You can see the holes in the wheel, uh, the wheel wells there. Clear parts eventually will go in there. And if I'm honest, not too much of that is all gonna be seen. It's beautiful though. The top decking of the fuselage is clear because there's two little clear inspection circles or whatever they are so they were masked and then that was sprayed black now so bit for the seat and the instrument panel again mrp and then a lot of the little tiny little bits were painted while still on the sprue but there is a bit of gray so out came the brush just for the surround for the instrument panel where it's going to mount on and then the seat that needed touching in with the brush I 
think that looks quite nice. That's going to be uh, black leather. Uh, contrast is the order of the day here because it is a very small cockpit opening and I wanted just to exaggerate some of the highlights and lowlights especially on the seat just to bring out that padded sort of texture so this is diluted um, ammo acrylic paint and I'm doing the sort of figure painting technique a little bit of diluted black for the bottom and that picks out that detail quite nicely and if the contrast is a little bit too much for your taste you can just go in with a filter over the top instruments panel is very nicely molded and I decided to use the decal I did have the Yahoo replacement but uh, it is buried so far deep it's actually quite difficult to see but using a bit of uh, setting solution here's the decal going on over the top you just need to line that up and you can see how lovely that decal is uh, dry brushing I find is uh, not particularly realistic uh, you're better off painting it dark grey and dry brushing it black rather than a, a very light colour but we're just going to put that uh, decal down Make sure it's all lined up and then squidge it down with a cotton bud. Just getting rid of any trapped air, squeezing out any excess setting solution. And then once that's done, we'll go in with the with the sole. Both of these are from ammo. And that will suck it all down into that detail very nicely. And it gives a really nice realistic effect. Right, talking of effects. This is just a made-up oil wash. I just wanted a kind of slightly warmer tone in the background. Obviously darker. And uh, that was just touched in using capillary action to kind of um, suck it along all the detail. And being glossy, it uh, it flows really very nicely. Not much of that in the forward areas or behind the seat are going to be seen, but you know, if anything else, it's good practice. And not forgetting on the floor and the seat, and you see there a little bit of silver in parts that was just chipped with a sponge. And again, not much of this is going to be seen, if I'm honest. But the detail is beautiful. It's very crisp, it's very fine. You can see how thin that control column is. And we'll just let that dry for a bit and then we can come in with a brush moistened with a bit of thinner and just clean up the excess. I did go in as well with a bit of a cotton bud in places. But using oils means it, it blends really nicely. You see there towards the back I've taken a little bit too much off. But uh, you could just go back in and add some more. It's uh, very versatile stuff. When that was all dry, uh, I decided to do a bit of post shading actually. As I said, I wanted to exaggerate the contrast a bit. So this is just a black brown mix with Tamiya acrylics. Diluted right down and I'm just creating a little bit extra shadow. Because then we can go in with some of the neat MRP and just highlight the centre of the panels. And this is where the contrast comes into its own. Because we've done the post shading with the darker colour, that was over the top of the raised bits. So just using again some ammo acrylics watered down with a bit of paint, I just touched in all the high spots with the brush. This is very much exaggerated, 
but you kind of need to do that because the opening is so small it's it's just a dark hole so by exaggerating all the highlights and lowlights you stand more of a chance of seeing it and not forgetting the cockpit floor be a shame to uh, to lose all such fine detail now for the fiddly bits there's quite a few little black boxes and levers and whatnot going on the side walls so just using a bit of super glue they were just all added these are all the bits that were painted on the sprue before I did think about adding some wiring, but uh, honestly, <laughs> honestly, I'm glad I didn't in the end, because as I keep saying, you're not really going to see it. And there it, there it is. That is the finished cockpit. Very quick, quite simple, but beautifully detailed. And that's the end of part two. Coming up in part three, though, we're going to do the construction. Again, I use super glue for all the seams. It really is my go-to these days. Do a bit of dry brushing to bring out all that detail on the engine. Use a bit of uh, super glue filler, which is a little bit unnecessary, actually, because the fit's great. So uh, join me on that one. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.